Today we have a Henry's Fat Boy. Yeah. Is that 1863? No, 60. Oh no, this is a this is not an original. All right. I'm thinking about the 1866, yeah. yeah a, a the yellow, one. the whole bronze receiver, all that stuff. Actually, we did a uh, uh, Jeff Taverner from Gunslinger came in. We got to uh, introduce him to a guy with a collection uh, who had passed away. He had an original 1866, Henry. He had an 1873 serial number six. Wow. Yeah. Went for 125 grand. <laughs> I got to hold it. Didn't get to shoot it. But uh, pretty interesting stuff. Here we go. For whatever reason, that doesn't sound good on the video. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Um, this particular show, I think, is going to be pretty interesting because we're talking about an event, a big event, an annual event, an event that you need to go to early, go early, go often, uh, or at least once a year since it is an annual event. And what I'm talking about is the Route 66 Range Expo. So this is something worth traveling for. You know, our shows in California, our shows in Arizona, this particular event is in California, but it's a pretty fantastic event at the Route 6, Route 66, Route 66, however you want to say that, uh, shooting park in uh, basically the DeVore area, uh, northern, northern San Gabriel Valley, kind of area where the 15 and the and the 215 kind of meet um, anyway that's generally the location it's in but it's going to be a fantastic event we're talking about more than 50 different vendors you can have an opportunity to shoot different weapons see all different kinds of things and it's brought to you by route 66 shooting shooting park and i have caleb Wu here caleb Wu, good morning buddy how you doing hey phil how's it going very good. So tell us a little bit about this expo, what you guys are thinking about, and, and, and the date, right? I forgot to say the date. Yeah. So Sunday, October 2nd, uh, 2022, that's going to be our inaugural uh, event date for our now reoccurring annual Route 66 Range Expo. So uh, this is an expo or an event that's open to the public. There's a small entry fee that's involved there to kind of cover overhead. But essentially what this event seeks to do is to bring our local shooting community together. We've invited a bunch of our partners and our uh, vendors out, manufacturers, uh, big names uh, in the industry to be able to come out here, showcase their, their products and services so that our community is able to kind of get a hands-on look and feel at some of the things that are out there and available. Now, additionally, um, we are using this as an opportunity to raise funds for uh, Second Amendment advocacy groups such as the California Pistol Rifle Association, the Firearms Policy Coalition, and some of our local guys like the uh, Inland Empire Gun Owners Association, mm -hmm. um, just because we feel that it's very, very important that these organizations are receiving the funding they need to continue fighting in the courts uh, to <clears throat> to not necessarily like, uh, you know, fight for our rights, but rather reinstate our rights because they're becoming more and more restricted. And now with the Supreme Court uh, brewing case coming down, I we just feel that there's going to be so much more meat to all of these uh, cases. And of course, cases cost money. And so we're using this event as an opportunity uh, to raise money as well. So um, it's a fundraiser as well as a community event that's going to bring everyone together to have a good time, check things out, eat food, listen to guest speakers, and uh, you know, just conversate with the, you know, with your friends and family and uh, other like-minded individuals. You know, you say it's a community event, but this isn't just a local community event. This is a Second Amendment community event. And like I said, we've had audiences in, in Arizona, all across California, and and plus the podcast goes everywhere. But this is something worth traveling for. If you've not been to an event like this, and you know, there were a few uh, years back in Southern California that were pretty awesome. But this is something you're bringing back out. Um, it's, it's like a freedom fair, 
right? You're able to walk in there and just see all kinds of great things. And you're with people who aren't soy based. So it's a it's, you know, they're not going to melt down if they see a, a black firearm on a counter there. Uh, it, it's an awesome time because you're with good people. Now, you mentioned the CRPA. We're good friends with the CRPA. Rick Travis, I've had on the show. I can't count how many times, but that's because he's out there doing yeoman's work. The Bruin case, you know, they were part of that, even though it was a New York Pistol uh, Association, but they were part of that and, and uh, fought with them on that. But the, the organizations that are in California need help from people nationwide. And that's because we have the most radical, horrible governors and, and leaders who write these unbelievably terrible laws, and then we have to fight them here. If we don't fight them and win, it goes into the 11th Circuit Court, handles the whole 11 states, or, or the, the Western states, 9th Circuit Court, 11 states, excuse me, you know, and then it goes to the Supreme Court, and if it gets passed through there, it's everybody's problem. So, even if you're not in California, it is important that you support groups like this, the CRPA, the Firearm Policy Coalition, Craig Deleuze over there, Inland Shooting, those guys are local, they're, um, they're, they're great people, they're on the ground finding out who should be the next waterboard guy, right? So it's important that they have, have this depth. And just because you think you're in a Second Amendment friendly place, we have a constitutional republic and federal laws can screw up where you live. So it's important that you do this. And, and here's a fun way to do it, right? Head on out to Route 66, October 2nd. Uh, what time does it start, Caleb? Starts at 10 a.m. and ends at 3. So it's not even going to be a full deal, full day deal. You're able to get in and out, do what you need to do, see what you need to see and hop on out and catch dinner. And there is an in and out close by. Um, yes. <laughs> You'll be out in time for margaritas. So that's a good thing. Um, catch the sunset, have a good time. Uh, no, one will, no one will even notice you're gone, really. I mean, you know, you're leaving at nine in the morning, you're back before sun's down. The, the street lights aren't on yet. So mom's not calling your name. So you should yeah. be able to get away with this. Get there, get what you need to do. You said um, it, on this event, are there, is there going to be live firing? Yes. So that's one question that we get all the time is, is the range still going to be open? Uh, actually, the range is going to be closed specifically for this event. However, we have a range, why not use it? So we're kind of bringing in, um, I know the general public has probably never been to SHOT Show or the media day where you get to kind of try out the new guns and stuff like that. And of course, here in California, we have yeah. Yeah, pretty restrictive things like the roster and stuff like that. So oftentimes you walk into a gun store and like, oh, I want to try that SIG P365 or at least just hold it. And they're like, nope, can't do it unless you're law enforcement. Well, the cool thing about us is that we have a roster of off-roster guns that we're able to rent out and have people try out, right? And some of our vendors and partners that manufacture firearms, they're going to bring guns out that we will then have the ability to showcase via live fire so uh, most of it's going to be free you just pay for ammunition right and then we'll figure that out it's going to be a ticket-based system kind of like like a fair or a carnival right you get a ticket you know no this ride is, yeah yeah this rides five tickets that rides 10 tickets whatever the case is um but it just makes it a little more streamlined and you're basically just paying for ammunition you get to try out more or less uh all sorts of different types of guns and we're not just talking uh like the same basic 12 that are on the roster right yes yeah we're talking about things not like, like oh you get to try out a, a gen 3 glock 19 oh, thanks. right yeah yeah so we have various partners that are either making accessories or components for firearms that are, we're going to be able to showcase via live fire and at the same time those uh those vendors will be out there on the floor who are some of the vendors um some of the vendors let's see here who where do i even start i don't want to you know Go alphabetically as best you can. Al alphabetically. You know, let me pull up my list really quick. I just had that going here. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to read, read this down the line here. Uh, Chris USA, they come up there. They have their Chris Vector. We have Lead Devil USA. They make uh, some really good duty and range belts. That Vector, stag is, arms. That, that vector is the funky looking uh, yeah, uh, like semi Yeah, like space gun. Yeah, that's yeah. an awesome thing. No recoil and you can just run yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That's, 45 uh, ACP. That's a cool 45, thing. 9, and now they also have a 22. So that's of kind of a cool thing. Uh, Norma Precision, Safari Land, Shadow Systems, uh, Hollow Sun, 
uh, Apollo Gear Co. is our night vision partner. Uh, Red Eye Targets Trauma Pack, Strike Industries, uh, Howitzer Clothing. Let's see, Bang Energy. They're going to come out and give some drinks away. Core Essentials, uh, in my opinion, the best uh, everyday carry belt. Uh, let's see, 511 is going to be out here. TTI, Terran Tactical Innovations. Uh, the Gun Company, Dynamic Weapon Solutions, Savior Equipment, who's a major sponsor as well. Surefire, uh, of course, that make some of the best lights in the market. Magpul, who, uh, of course, everyone knows Magpul. They they have their hands right. in just about everything. Uh, and, of course, our Second Amendment advocacy groups like CRPA and uh, Inland Empire Gun Owners uh, Association. So that's just a few that I'm just kind of skimming through this list because uh, otherwise I'd be here for another 15 minutes just going through the list. So that's oh, great radio. Yeah, I just read, read a list is, is the best radio ever. So it's no problem. We'll, <laughs> we'll wait. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not used to we Our only superpower on their show is sarcasm. So we'll, we'll work with that. Um, but Route 66. So if you haven't been involved, or haven't headed out there yet. I actually took a course from one of the people who's going to be out at, uh, at your location coming up here, um, Fieldcraft. And, you know, they do their pistol one, two carbine courses. And, and I think uh, Mike Glover is going to actually be out there. So folks, if you don't know who he is, he's been on the show before. Um, that is not his claim to fame, but he, he's a pretty awesome guy, a really great story. And, you know, we'll, we'll pick it up when we come back from this next commercial break about what they're going to be doing out there and how to meet some of these people. So folks, Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show. Check out Route 66. That's route66sp.com. That sound right? r66ssp.com. That's even easier to spell. r66ssp.com. We'll be right back after this. How do you spell 66? I see what you did there. Yeah, just that. numerical. Okay. rssp66.com yeah all right r66 ssp r66 ssp yeah so like root 66 and then ssp but it's basically like an acronym then i i get it i just had it wrong i, yeah. I understand it i was just wrong <laughs> all right Terran tactical is he gonna have any guns out there to, to try it have you shot any of his stuff um, I haven't personally, but I just got off a call with them yesterday. So they're going to be bringing um, some other guns uh, so that, you know, uh, the, the public can try them out. I'm not exactly sure what they're bringing quite yet. I think they're still working that out, um, but I'm sure they're going to have tons of guns at their booth. You know, all the John Wick stuff, the new Sand Viper that they have out there, perhaps. So, yeah. yeah I got to shoot some of his uh, his stuff when I was in Oklahoma at the CCW Safe Summit. Mm -hmm. My buddy's like, I hate Glocks. I said, well, you may want to try this one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a hater till you shoot it. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. I think we're ready, Dan. All right, you primitive screwheads. Listen up. See this? This is my boomstick. Hey, folks, welcome back to Boomstick Radio. You know, every week we always talk about some of our different sponsors. This week, we want to talk about CCW Safe. CCWSafe.com is where you're going to find them. Use the code fire, FIRINGLINE10, I think, is 10% off on that. If not, just PM me. I'll get you the right code. No, I'm just kidding. It's FIRINGLINE10. So um, this is a prepaid legal service. It's not insurance, but it is unlimited coverage if you have to use a weapon in defense of your life. So it's an awesome thing to check out, ccwsafe.com. Use our code and get 10% off on that for the rest of your life. Uh, joining me back here, I have Caleb Wu. Caleb Wu is with Route 66, uh, Route 66 Shooting Park in, are they calling it DeVore? What is oh, we call it San Bernardino. Um, okay. Yeah, it's unincorporated. It's right on the fringes of DeVore. Either way, we'll get mail at either address. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah according to the government there's no difference but um yeah you know, we call it san bernardino it's just a little because devore no one really knows it's such a small town no one really knows what it is so we it's, just call it san bernardino it's basically the beginning of the el cajon pass if you're uh if yes. you're heading up to vegas just before you hit the 
and climb into that mountain. That's basically where they're at is at the mouth of the pass. It's a pretty cool little place up there. Um, talking about some of the dignitaries you're going to have at the October 2nd Range Expo, um, starting at 10 a.m., going till 3, you happen to have somebody who's who's pretty popular in the Second Amendment community. You want to talk a little bit about that? And yes. Now, yeah. <laughs> I hope you'll be there too. But yeah, uh, so we have Mike Lover of Fieldcraft Survival coming out as well. And, um, you know, if you're not familiar with him, he's a former uh, Green Beret uh, Special Forces guy uh, that's made a name for himself in his uh, his company, Fieldcraft Survival, uh, which seeks to better prepare uh, your family unit, your community. It's all about preparedness, right? So Mike's going to be coming out. He's going to be giving a quick, you know, seminar regarding living your prep life that's what his seminar is going to be about um i'm hope uh, his whole team is going to be out here as well uh showcasing any products that they might have and as a matter of fact uh he's going to be teaching a class the day before mm -hmm. and we're an official field craft range partner which means we're one of their exclusive facilities here in southern california or in the oh. country right so in mm -hmm. southern california anytime they need some kind of lifeguard training we are their go-to venue so We've established that relationship a little over a year ago, and it's been working out great. And so a lot of the field craft classes that you see in California, if it's Southern California, it's going to be here at Route 66 Shooting Sports Park. Um, but yeah, he'll be out here, meet and greet. Um, you know, if you've never met him before, he's a really, really down to earth guy, right? Um, and so we're excited to have him out. Now, additionally, uh, we we can't uh, forget the people that we worked with in the past. So we have Reno May coming back. He runs a YouTube channel that uh, talks specifically about firearms laws, namely those here in California, uh, because of course we have probably by far the most kind of the cases yes. yeah, in, in uh, the court system. Now, that being said, uh, Reno is going to be out here doing a meet and greet as well. As a matter of fact, when we first started doing these events, it was kind of pivoted on a meet and greet with Reno May. Then we had Reno May and, and, and Arm Scholar, uh, Anthony Miranda. He was out uh, last year for this kind of joint event. And so he unfortunately is not able to make it this year. There's a conflict in uh, the scheduling, but um, Reno you know, will be coming out uh, to, to meet and greet with his fans and his, uh, his following. And of course, Mike Glover is going to be on, on site as well and at the field craft booth and during the seminar. So we're excited to have everyone out to meet and greet. And so it's not just a, like your typical gun show where you walk in and just, you know, stare at all 15,000, you know, exotic knife booths. Right. So, um, it'll be really cool. <laughs> Wait, this one's made out of coconut shells and uh, yeah. eagle eggs. So yeah, <laughs> it's, that's how it is in California, at least. I don't know how it is throughout the rest of the country, but no, it's true. Um, you know, you, you head out there and you're like, okay, well, it looks like a yard sale. Where's the guns? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think the great thing is the, the ability, availability or potential availability to try the guns you haven't seen before. You know, mm -hmm. um, when we travel outside of the People's Republic of Occupied California and you walk into a gun store and it's like you've been like you've been in a gulag, you know, mm -hmm. and you're like, wow, look at can, can I touch that? It's like, well, what the hell's the matter with you, son? Of course you can. You're like, well, what? That it's not law enforcement only. He's like, where you been, boy? It's like you... I'm I'm allowed to do that. Like I feel like <laughs> I just escaped North Korea and I'm seeing like clean air and yeah. freedom for the first time. You so. guys have electricity all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it it's an amazing thing when you step into another state and just see what's out there. So what's nice uh, with some of the cases that we've had, and with Bruin and the ruling that we have, and maybe getting rid of this ridiculous, unsafe roster in California, you may very shortly have the ability to actually purchase these firearms yeah. in this state, and that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. So definitely, you can head out there, bring a pad of paper and your pen and start making your wish list because Christmas is coming. If we can get some of this stuff overturned, man, it's going to be a flood. You're going to want to own a gun store in California just for me. Oh yeah. Um, is Walter coming out there at all? Walter is not, we, nope. we don't have an official relationship with Walter. Um, so unfortunately they're not going to be uh, in attendance. We, we are trying not to, you know, 
to inundate because I'm sure all of these manufacturers are getting inundated with requests nationwide 24 seven because there's always small events here and there uh, locally that pop up. And of course, uh, I've even in our research, we've uh, some of the manufacturer contact pages, they say, please don't contact us with events. We get thousands of requests every year. We simply cannot attend. We're not doing events, period. Uh, but of course, some of our um, <clears throat> vendors that are coming out, we have a working relationship with. So we're able to kind of get through that barrier a little more easily. Um, so that's uh, kind of what, how we got this started was we're just simply working with the vendors that we already work with. So um, that's how we're going to start. And then hopefully in the future, uh, we can get more and more people on board so that we can make this event bigger, better, and more enjoyable for everyone involved. How many people do you think are going to be there? Wow, that's a, that's a tough question. That, how uh, many people are you prepared for? We're prepared for upwards of 3,500 people. So um, right now, as of- That's a lot of porta-potties. Yes, yes, it is. And as a matter of fact, next week we'll be getting those ordered up. Um, that now that we have a little more data to work with, but it's uh, it's about two weeks from the event. Uh, sorry, October second. Yeah, about two weeks out from the event, and uh, we're looking at right now. Uh, last I checked last night, we're at over a thousand tickets sold, and we still have two weeks to go. So in just one week, we've sold over a thousand tickets. Um, both in person and online. And of course, you can always buy tickets directly online. We're using Eventbrite to kind of expedite the process. Yeah, and it's only you have a, a button on your site, right? They can go right yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, on our social media and on our website. So we're going to actually, I'm going to actually try and say your website correctly this time. Okay. Um, r66ssp.com r 66 ssp.com route 66 uh, shooting sports park dot yep. uh, com now um this is a family owned venue right yes uh, we we uh out, we own the property outright so there's it's not a lease it's not you know anything like that so we own the property uh, and it's unincorporated county property which means it's not leased from the federal government uh, like some of the San other Bernardino ranges. county or la it's in San Bernardino County. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So uh, we don't have to, you know, kind of skirt around some of the restrictions that some of the other facilities in the region are dealing with in terms of road closures, forest, or, uh, forest closures, et cetera. We're not really affected by that. So um, we are completely independent, privately owned, uh, and we own the property outright. There's So it allows us a lot of flexibility in what we want to do with this place. And believe me when I say we have some pretty big visions and aspirations, and that's going to be coming soon. So um, Very good. Yeah. Find out more folks at r66ssp.com. We'll be right back after this. All right. Do, 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 do. Membership. Anytime, Dan. Spartans! Your weapons. Come and get them. Hey folks, Mulan Lave Saturday. Hope you're having a great day out there wherever you are. And I hope on October 2nd, you make the trip. If you're in Arizona, head on out, man. October 2nd, make the trip. In fact, PM me. If you're coming in from Arizona, PM me. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll hook up out there. October 2nd at the Route 66 Shooting Sports Park in roughly San Bernardino area. Uh, it's a great facility. It's easy to get to. Uh, once you get on one road, you can't miss it. <laughs> it's the only thing on yeah. that road. Yeah, so definitely. Off the freeway, make a left, and you're there uh, around the corner. You make a right, you're up the mountain. So it's pretty easy to figure out to stay on the pavement. So head on out there to Route 66 Shooting Sports Park. You're going to have the Range Expo, all kinds of different vendors out there. Some great personalities, as you just heard in our last section on that. You know, um, anyway, it's open to the public. Now, you guys also have memberships available. And I should have asked earlier, we talked about the membership, but do you still have them available or are you sold out? 
Yeah, so we do have a hard cap on our membership just because our facility right now uh, is only able to accommodate X number of people. And it's kind of like a gym membership. And we don't, we understand right. that some gym memberships, they just is unlimited. And now you go there, there's a million people in there, you can't get anything done. So uh, we do have a hard cap on our memberships at uh, a few hundred. I'm not going to say exactly how much because that that might change in the future. I don't want to pigeonhole us quite yet. But uh, that being said, despite having memberships, we are open to the public. So we're not a members only club. So you can always walk in and still uh, utilize a range as a non-member, but members will get additional perks and benefits. Like for example, uh, they get to shoot for free Monday through Friday and, and bring one guest for half off. And then anyone else after that is regular price on the weekends, they're able to come in uh, for themselves at half the cost of our regular range fees. And the major benefit, of course, is the ability to make reservations with no minimums. So if you wanted to guarantee your spots on a given day for just yourself, if you wanted to, you can make the reservation and then uh, that's going to be kind of uh, locked in. So you're not going to show up and have to wait or show up and be turned away. So uh, that's kind of the cool thing. Now, members of the public are that's, also able that's, to make that's reservations. A very, that's a very cool thing Yeah, um, to be able to have guaranteed spots. Hey, you know, we're going to do some training. We're going to do blah, blah, blah. We want to be in, we want to be able to have this particular site. We want to be able to get in early, do my setup, whatever it is, and not have to wait in, in 52 lines or, or be told, mm -hmm. sorry, man, you know, Joe Blow from Idaho came in and uh, took the last spot. Right. That, that would just not make a good day. So the ability to make the reservations, I think is well worth it. Now, are you capped right now? With your memberships? No, we still have some memberships available, but uh, I will say this, it is closing fast, right? And of course, right. we've been open for now for about two years. So some of our members uh, either don't renew, forget to renew. So it's kind of a revolving door type of process. Move but out of right state. Now, yeah, yeah, that happens actually um, more been. often than you think. <laughs> especially in this community. But in any case, yeah, we still have memberships available, but that window, that cap is pretty close to uh, to that hard limit. So um, depending on retention, that may, may be closed off in the near future, but of course it's just I'm, gonna I'm be. sure by by the time of this, this boating event, if it's not closed, people who come out there and realize what it is, it will be. So yeah, right. if you're interested, check that out at r66ssp.com. Um, most of the shooting that I've seen out there is basically shorter range pistol base, correct? Yes, we, we actually allow for all types of firearms to be shot in our facility. Uh, but you don't our, have a 300 yard range or? No, at least not yet. That's, uh, that's one of those things that uh, we're looking to expand into. Uh, because there are some great facilities in the region that allow you to shoot 300 plus, but not so much in our region, in the Inland Empire, right? Unless it's a private club. Um, so uh, our- Or unless you of, drive three hours. Yeah, you can go all the way into BLM land, you know, in the desert. Or, or uh, Angeles. You know, if you go to Angeles, oh, yeah. but from, yeah. from the eastern part of the valley, that's a two and a half, three hour one way drive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I've been up there a few times myself. And yeah, it's a, it's a, definitely a drive out. So we're trying to make that available uh, on our part of town. And uh, so we're running into a few challenges because uh, we need to expand our property lines and we have to get the proper permitting and stuff like that. So that's just kind of a, a bump in the road. And hopefully we can get that done soon. But, but some of the things that you guys do really well right now, I mean, I was just pointing out that it's not it's not the long range stuff right now, but right. if you want to shoot pistol, you've got galleries already set up, right? Yeah. So our steel gallery is a full uh, steel target uh, shooting gallery. So each lane or each booth rather has its own array of targets that you're able to shoot at. So it's not like a free for all wild west where, you know, um, the person twenty yards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you at least you know what you're hitting uh, when you shoot at it. It's not you're not going to have someone else shooting at your targets at the same time you're shooting. So uh, that's strictly for pistol caliber only. Uh, no magnums, no uh, five seven, just velocity concerns and whatnot. But 
most of our bays are what we call private bays, which means you, your friends and family, you get that space to yourself. So you don't have 50 people on the line calling a line break and a ceasefire and doing all that. You call your own line break ceasefires. You can walk up and down the range as you see fit, as close to the target as you feel safe. Well, you know, there's a certain distance that you kind of want to stay away from that's too close but uh, we also allow for use of steel targets so if you have your own steel targets you can bring that out and just let us know and not every and, place not every place allows that correct you know yeah. banning in in our local club here there's zero steel targets which yeah. is you know yeah and steel is just so much fun to shoot um that instant gratification is unlike punching holes in paper right both have its place but uh it's still just nice to have that ability to offer the option yeah. yeah. So you have to have, have a guy behind me when I'm shooting paper with a little bell. With a yeah. Ding. Oh yeah, there you go. It's it's yeah, more labor intensive iron. that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh the cool thing about our private base also is because you're kind of in your own spot, uh we're able to allow more flexibility in what you're able to do in your own space. So things like drawing from the holster, shooting and moving, multiple target engagement, all the things that you should be doing to actively train for self-defensive purposes. Uh, you're, you typically can't do that in an indoor range, right? No. Most indoor range don't even let you shoot two drop. rounds in a row. Yeah. So, and you know, I get it. It's a liability thing as well, but um, the way we're set up, we're able to, again, just offer a little more flexibility in any type of shooting and training you're trying to accomplish. You know, I think that's the big thing about the second amendment community is a little bit of responsibility for yourself, right? Yeah. A little freedom. Hey, you know what? If you're going to be an idiot, you're going to pay the price, but you don't have somebody standing over your shoulder every 10 seconds, uh, ruining your day. Right. Right. Be, be safe because you're the one who's going to pay the hospital bills. So. Yeah. Or the funeral. So, right. yeah. or your family's going to be paying the funeral, but in any case, that's kind of our outlook. You know, we've, um, we're all shooters ourselves, you know, right. um, we've been all of our management and, and founders and owners and stuff. We've been throughout the country and even internationally. Isn't, uh, the, isn't Jojo connected to your range? Yes. Jojo is one of the partners. Uh, Jojo Vidanas. He's a multi-time world champion uh, in various disciplines of, uh, of shooting sports. So um, he's a valuable asset that we have to really tap into to okay. um faster than yeah. heck man i, I he, he's still is a few years ago yeah still is still didn't he is. get a knee he, he uh, had a knee issue or something but he's back up and running uh yeah he's i would say he's not quite 100 percent yet but even at 70 percent, he's still faster than yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah. so yeah. yeah great resources there you guys are all pistol shooters you know how it's don't how it's done and what to look for um again that's going to be at r66ssp.com come on out to the october 2nd october 2nd um range expo you're going to get to do some shooting you're going to get to see a lot of stuff a lot of really cool gear you know meet some great people that are out there it's going to be an annual event community-based and we didn't even mention this, but most of the money that's being raised after costs are donated to those fighting for the Second Amendment, right? Well, yes and no. So most, the only most. costs, yeah, uh, the only things that are going towards overhead are the entry fees. That's it. Everything else that's being sold there, all the raffle tickets, all the proceeds uh, and profits from that are going towards these various Second Amendment advocacy groups and some of the partners we're working with, they're offering huge, massive deals, uh, you know, 75% off their products and anything else that you pay, that's strictly a donation to the CRPA, FEC and whatnot. So it's, it's great to get all of these companies involved and really, you know, putting some skin in the game as well, because I, I feel that's important. It's not a donation to these groups. It's you putting some money in to fight the second amendment gun grabbers. That's, that's the way you need to look at it. Whatever yeah. you're paying in, that's what's going towards that. Folks, Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show. We'll be right back after this. You know, it's, it's a hard thing because so many people don't get involved, you know, and they're like, well, that's your job. You should do this and you should do that. And I mean, mm -hmm. for 10 years I've been doing the show and I see so much of that. It, literally sets off my Tourette's um, and, and it's like, no, man, it, it, you know, I was at a, I was at a range a couple weeks ago 
doing a at West End. Mm -hmm. And I was telling the guys about the fact that California is trying to make all ammunition lead free, even on shooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, Oh, I don't care. I'm a move. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like I have a lot of, you know, some friends that are planning on moving or have already moved. And, you know, everyone that I talk to, like, why don't you just move out? Like, you know, Texas seems a little more your speed, Arizona, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. But at the same time, like, I don't want to run from a fight. You have to stop it. You have to stop it where you are. You can't Cause it's, just, it's a matter of time. Like I move there, then what's going to happen next in 10 years, the same thing's going to happen over there. So we have where, to stop it where, where the infection has started. Right. Where did the vice president come from? Who's running the speaker of the house, right? They're all yeah. from out here. Mm -hmm. So the, the, if you don't stop the politics here, it's going to infect the entire nation. The gang, yep. the gangrenous. Right. Yeah. You got to you got to get rid of the gangrene or the whole body's going to die. And that's what I think we just need to keep telling people is fight where you're at. Yep. Fight in both places. Even if you live somewhere else, fight here because this is the front line. You yep. Know? I think Joe Biden can send $80 billion to the CRPA because we're the ones fighting tyranny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, the, that's our political not, commentary. It's not the first time the U.S. government has invested money into destroying themselves. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a good deal when you can get it, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So, this is our last segment. Anything special you wanted to cover? Um, let's see. Uh, we could talk about if you want. We can dip into a little bit of CCW and training stuff because that's kind of a hot topic right now. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Because we're pretty big on the CCW side of things as well. So um, training and whatnot. So, yeah, if we want to talk about that for a few minutes, I think that would be cool too. All right. It's your show. Let's do it. All right, Dan. Yes. Great hunter. Yes. Fine figure of a man. Yes. 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 That is all you need to know. Or no. Hey, folks, that's actually the match.com um, segment there on how to find a perfect wife. So just, you know, those those are the questions. You go to an interview, you're meeting her for the first time. Just ask those questions and you'll know whether or not to buy dinner. So it's a good good uh, training tool for uh, relationships going forward there. Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show. Uh, check us out at firinglineradio.com. I'm here with Caleb Wu at Route 66. We're talking about the Range Expo, have been talking about the Range Expo for the last three segments here. R66SSP.com is where you're going to find that out. It's October 2nd, 10 to 3. Head on over there. It's open to everybody who wants to come. It's a great Second Amendment community event, and that's what it's all about is making sure that people get great information, they get uh, great products, and you know one of the things they have at Route 66 is great training. So everybody wants to carry concealed. And now in some of our counties, uh, it's in Arizona, it's open carry, concealed carry, whatever you want, it, you're fine. You don't even need a, a blessing from the Pope. You can carry whatever you want, which is great. In California, it's not, and they do require some training. And I think you and I spoke out a little bit offline. It is your responsibility as somebody who's carrying a firearm to be trained. It's absolutely important. You have the right to carry a firearm as long as you're not a felon, but you have a responsibility to know how to use that. So Caleb, why don't you talk about that a bit? Yes, absolutely. So with the recent, uh, not only the Supreme Court, you know, brewing case going on with a uh, specifically dealing with CCW, um, but in general with the whole civil unrest and the pandemic back as early as 2020, uh, all, a lot of our local counties here in Southern California, including Los Angeles County, right, go figure, that's like completely caught us off guard, have now been issuing CCW permits to everyday people you don't have to be a business owner to carry large sums of cash you don't need to make a generous contribution to the sheriff's department like it used to be <laughs> uh, back in prior administrations um, or even now in certain parts of the uh, the state but in any case uh, CCW permits are now attainable 
right? And a lot of people are starting to catch on to that fact. So we're seeing an influx of applications. All of our local sheriff's departments are now seeing a huge, massive influx, tens of thousands of applicants uh, at a time. So the cool thing is, you know, we as a facility, we have, we are one of the training providers for various counties in the region to be able to offer the state mandated eight hour training, right? Now the state mandated eight hour training, it's cool, but it's not great because all it does is talk about rules, policies, procedures, do's and don'ts, et cetera, all the stuff that's legally required for you to know. Now, what it doesn't talk about is how to draw your firearm from concealment, how to carry concealed, right? What options you have, what equipment's out there, what you should do uh, perhaps in a certain situation or even just the practical skills and the technical skills that's required to be proficient with the use of firearms. And yeah. like you said, it's a personal responsibility for each and every one of us to decide to take on this, uh, this role as a armed defender to be proficient with that firearm. Because if you're not, number one, your own life is at stake. And number two, the, the threat to the public is you know yeah. increased if you're not you, being proficient. You own every bullet you send out of your gun until it stops moving. Whatever it does, it's got your name on it. We do the, uh, the nationwide CCW safe podcast with Rob high. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we talk about that. It's training. It's always training, you know, and, and one of the great things you have training classes, but then do you guys do any matches or IDPA or have anything like that yet? Yes, absolutely. So every Saturday, uh, in the morning until about noon, there is a level one pistol competition. So level one means, guess what? You don't need to be some hot shot, you know, uh, world time champion to attend. You can be, I you just got my gun Chicago. last week. I mean, you don't, I I've shot that plenty of times with just my factory Glock pistol. So, um, there's different divisions and classifications for all kinds of equipment uh, that you may or may not have. So it's just, having the right mindset, the willingness, and um, the want a, to learn. Is this like an IDPA or just like a practical pistol? Uh, it's, it's not so much IDPA because IDP is more like, you know, from concealment and whatnot. Right. Uh, this is more like USPSA, IPSC okay. uh, style. So. so basically outside the waistband holster, mm -hmm. do you allow them to draw from inside the waistband on that? Um, I don't recall. That okay. would be a question. Just, for just think about the outside club. the waistband yeah. holster folks. But if you have not trained before, this is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Training, go take the training classes, right? Training is essential. You need to have the right proper stuff. After you've gone through one or two of the training courses, I do recommend that you take some of these, these matches, if you will, I call them shooting events, All yeah. right? I go to them. I enjoy myself. I have zero um, d delusions of grandeur about winning, but you know, I, I went, the last one I shot was a, a, the Lisa match at West end, man, my M one a jammed up so bad. I had to mortar it open about 27 times. Well, what'd that teach me? Teach me there's a big problem with that gun and look at, I'm an expert now at opening up an M one a, but but it was an absolute disaster time-wise, but it was probably one of the best training days I've ever had because every stage was an adversity. Mm -hmm. You don't get that uh, without people shooting at you. So I'm not saying go there with a broken gun, but, but these events help you think through things. Um, a little bit of, of pressure, like the timer's going off, people are watching. You know, if you're standing there at the range shooting at paper, it's not that big a deal. You just put a little buzzer by your head, shooter ready, go. You've seen the way people react completely different, right? Oh, yeah. Everyone's got a plan. Well, the original saying is everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. But uh, in competition, it's like everyone's got a plan until that buzzer goes off. Then you just, oh, what happened? What was I doing? And it's kind of like. I walked past how many targets? Yeah. That, that's happened before uh, many times. Uh, so yeah, these, these things are great because it induces a little bit of stress, uh, through one way or the other, and it really forces you to test your own capability, but also, you know, test your, your equipment as well. Uh, I think what you mentioned was a good, perfect example. Oftentimes we have people show up to classes with subpar equipment, and now we're running through iterations of a course of fire or some kind of, uh, practical skill set. And they're either unable to perform the task or are having a very difficult time to perform that specific uh, exercise because their equipment's subpar. And so that's a learning point too. Not only are you learning the techniques, you're learning what works best 
for you uh, in terms of your equipment selection as well. So a lot of takeaways. So um, the training, if you wanted the CCW training, you guys are teaching them drawing from concealment, carrying reloads, all those other great things, right? Yeah, so we have a variety of different classes. Uh, some of our more popular one is our CCW Core class, C-O-R-E. It's an acronym. It stands for Carry Oriented Readiness Evaluation. Now, despite the name, right, it's not an actual evaluation. I'm not. We're not standing there with a clipboard like, oh, yeah, this guy is slow. This guy sucks. That's not what it's about, right? Rather, we give you the skills, the tools, and the mindset so you can self-evaluate your own readiness level. So it's kind of a cool little thing. It's like a supplement to the eight-hour CCW class to learn some practical skills and some additional kind of thinkings, right? Um, what to look for, how to stand, how to sit, where to park, you know, um, basic human behaviors, uh, red flags and indicators, uh, and also equipment selection. So it's a very basic entry uh, into this, the world of CCW. And it also goes into practical shooting in terms of, again, the efficiency and economy of movement of drawing your pistol from concealment and various ways to do it because there's not one thing that's going to work all the time. So offering different options and working around each individual's uh, perhaps physical deficiencies because sometimes we have 70-year-old ladies that are out there yep. doing their thing which I 100% admire because they need now it. They need it, and they understand that you know, just having a gun doesn't mean you're prepared. So, even even people like that, of course, there may be some physical deficiencies that they're not able to perform certain tasks. But what do we do? We find a way for them to to work through it and make it happen. Instead of like, well, I guess you're old. You're just going to die. It's like that's not the mindset, right? right? So it's important, you know. Hand strength goes, and you see those some of those ladies will have arthritis, and mm -hmm. you know. Hey, maybe uh, you think that a, you know, 45 or nine millimeters is great, but maybe all she can operate is a Walther P22 because right. the hands, and so you have to go with what they can do. And it's very important that you, that you do that. Um, so your Saturdays, every Saturday, you have a level one um, shooting event. Uh, how many rounds roughly? Typically that match is going to require anywhere from like, if, if you shoot it clean, don't have any makeup shots, like around 200 rounds would be sufficient um, for a new shooter. When I first started shooting matches, even though the round count was like 220, 230, I would bring 500 rounds. I would bring 600 rounds because sometimes it just takes the extra <laughs> rounds to hit the target. Right. So, um, but yeah, it's a, uh, you'll probably be okay with two to 300 rounds. It's not a huge, you know, barrier to entry, That's awesome. have a sturdy holster, some magazine carriers. And the cool part is if you don't have any of that equipment, talk to someone there. Yep. I will guarantee there's going to be 10 people jump up here. Use mine, use mine, use mine. It's, it's a, a really event. tight knit in a community. That's really, really, um, you know, forward thinking and wanting more people in the fold. So I think exactly. that's awesome. Very friendly folks, October 2nd, head on out there to the range expo at the, um, at the route 66 shooting sports park, r 66 ssp.com. Get your tickets. We'll see you there. You guys have a great day. God bless. Hello. It's your keyboard. Yep. Sorry. Someone was calling me and I'm using the phone as a camera. So I had to <laughs> double check that real quick. Are we clean, Dan? Well, I don't know about that, but yeah. We're good. All right. Cool. All right. Clean. That, you know, can't tell over Zoom. I don't think I want to know anyway. <laughs> That's probably the best bet. We had uh, had some issues with some army guys. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't remember saying anything, so no. we should be all right. No, I mean, I mean, clean meaning we're just done. We're all good. Oh, okay. No, no, you're, you're perfectly, perfect gentleman on that. Well, hey, um, anything we can do, man, you let us know, but uh, I think you're going to have a great event out there. October yeah, 7th. we're we're having a really positive outlook on the event, and uh, we're still working through some of the details uh, in terms of getting all the stuff prepared, of course. So it's crunch time. The next couple of weeks is going to be all hands on deck, getting everything done uh, and set up. So should be uh, should be a fun event. I think it's, everyone's going to should have a really good time. And then um, you know every every single thing that we do, we learn from. So year after year, it's just going to get better and better and better. So we're hoping to have a good time and offer something really awesome for our, our folks in the community to come out and uh, to attend and enjoy themselves. So really excited about that.
Very good. I will uh, email you a, a link to the Dropbox. You can get this video, cut it up, whatever you want, put it on your website. It's all up awesome. to you, however you want to use it, but it's sure. uh, free to use. And uh, that's it. Good okay. Night to you. Likewise. Well, hope you uh, we see each other. Uh, if you guys are coming out to the event, um, try to say hi. I'll probably be running around from place to place to place, but uh, feel free if you see me catch me say hi and uh anytime you guys want to drop by the range just shoot me hit me up let me know you know be happy to I show might, you guys around i might look at one of those uh memberships okay you know, i need a third one yeah you can never have too many <laughs> well if you're going to be teaching any kind of groups that makes what you have is better than west end right right yeah all right buddy all right philip dan it's been a pleasure when it's not just yeah we'll see you oh food's good all right.